WBCB presents Pro Wrestling Weekly. The longest running pro wrestling radio talk show in the history of terrestrial radio. And he's obviously Michael Cole. Call in with a question or comment at 215-949-3232 or 888-922-2149. Talking wrestling. Yeah. Because that's what this show is about. That's what we've been doing for over 16 years. No, 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 no. It's about sports entertainment. And now here are your hosts of Pro Wrestling Weekly. For Ron Derry and Lucas DeSangro. Will you stop marking out over there? Sorry. Move over, kid. I'm taking your microphone. You're shallow. You know that? (laughs) I'm running on two hours of sleep. I don't remember what the hell I do anymore. Shut up! There's the sound of the bell, and we are set to go. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Ferran Derry here with you alongside Mitch. Alongside Mitch, indeed. Glad to be back on the show as usual. You're bordering on being like Connor from Detroit Become Human. Like, you can relax a little bit. You don't have to be so right. so rigid. <laughs> uh, My name's Mitch. I'm the android sent by Cyberlife. It's like bordering <laughs> on what you're sounding like here. It, it, we'll work on it. it it's, yeah, it's, it's it's a work it's in progress. It's a work in progress, <laughs> and it'll, I'll get there eventually. Video game reference. Gotta gotta love it there. At least you got that one. That was that's good. Yeah, I played it a little. A L- little bit. Okay. Yeah, just a tad bit. Good to hear. And. I uh, just got a text uh, mere moments ago that uh, Lucas had a family emergency, so he will not be uh, he will not be joining us here. Uh, yeah, he. Hmm. Well, I'll find out more about that during the break. I won't uh, have immediate and direct correspondence here, as uh, well, I don't know how things are going to necessarily go. So I don't want to throw everything out there into the uh, into the public ear here. But yeah, he's. Uh, He's dealing with some personal issues, and uh, he won't be joining us today, and he is extremely apologetic to not just me, but also to you out there, as he enjoys being on the show, and it has stuck in his crawl that he hasn't been able to join us the last... I'm starting to lose count of how many weeks. (laughs) Uh, But still, hopefully everything's going to be okay. Uh, I I certainly hope so as well. We'll just... uh... Yeah, well, well, yeah, family issues and knowing his family as well as I I have over the course of the last five and a half years. Yikes, where does the time go? Time flies. It it does. And speaking of that, uh, and and where does the time go and things of that nature, kind of a low-key anniversary that I've been hinting at and talking about, and I don't know, I probably should be making a bigger deal of it than it actually is, but... Or than I have been, I should say, but I I don't know. I'm never I'm I'm never good when it comes to tooting my own horn or you know, being very uh, bombastic in that regard. But uh, this coming Wednesday marks a rather noted anniversary. Uh, this Wednesday will mark 20 years to the day that this show took air here on WBCB. That's amazing. Yeah, it was hosted by a previous host, you know, long-time listeners know Eric Belus Cannon Gargiulo, uh, and he, in the very early beginnings, had uh, teamed up with uh, with Rob from RF Video, a very noted name that I know is, uh, well, it, a name that creates a lot of reaction. We'll just, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Yeah. That's that's a very diplomatic way of putting it that won't get me in trouble. We'll, we'll put it that way. But no, I, I I say that, but also I, I've known Rob for a long time and, and have a business relationship with him and respect him greatly. And yeah, I, I will, we'll get more into that about the break. I don't want to, I don't want to bring up old, that's old news at this point, but it's new to you, but we'll, yeah, that this is not the venue to have that type of discussion. Understand. So what we will discuss is stuff going on in the world of wrestling, and boy, is there quite a bit. As well, there was a little bit of money talk that had occurred this past week, as WWE had issued the conference call and press release and everything regarding their fourth quarter numbers. And well, uh, to put it bluntly, things were pretty. Good. So nice. I guess yeah. So we'll I guess we'll get into that first here as uh, money. yeah. Let's get money, a little money, money talk money, going on money, here because that money, 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 
It's something that WWE likes to definitely talk about because they had quite a bit of it. Uh, releasing the financial results for the fourth quarter of 2018, and uh, I won't bore you with all the numbers, but let's just say their uh, their wallets are pretty fat right now. Quite spicy. Yeah. Uh, Chairman and CEO Vince McMahon saying, quote, in 2018, WWE generated the highest level of revenue and earnings in the company's history by leveraging our brand strength to increase the monetization of our content worldwide. Our long-term growth strategy will continue to focus on content creation, digitization, and international development. Well, that's loads of money. And loads of $5 words in there as well. All the corporate speak. It, it Basically, they're saying they've made more money than they have ever before, and that's because they continue to find ways to make money all over the world with the stuff that they have. And going forward, they're going to continue to work on making more things and making more things on the digital computery things and doing more to get out to other parts of the world. Huh. That's what all that... Yeah, that that's the English version of everything that he said there and all the... You know, the corporate ease and everything. I see. Because even I have to look at it and go, what is he saying here? But yeah, one one thing of note, and this is something that has crept about over the course of the last couple of months, and we've talked about it in fairly great deal, is that uh, WWE's deal with the Saudi Arabian government, were you... I think you were here for all that. The, yeah, the whole th- I, yeah, I, I the whole ten year deal and the, the yeah the the whole pay per view and the the, the 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 journalist thing around those back in like October November. Yeah, I think I was around there. Yeah. So, well, the deal that they had with that appears to have led to a substantial increase in a category marked other, and I use that in air quotes, in the revenue section for their fourth quarter financial report. So. They listed $144.7 million in revenue for the full year in that other section, compared to only $48.9 million the prior year in 2017. That's a huge difference. Gone up by quite a significant bit. Yeah, and just in the fourth quarter of 2018 alone, they listed $63.5 million just from the last three months of 2018 compared to $20.6 million in the same quarter a year prior. So doing the math, if I can put some numbers together here real quick, if the totals were, let's say, similar apart from that crown jewel and greatest Royal Rumble events in Saudi Arabia, that means that WWE made a combined at least, I don't know, 85 to 90 million dollars just from those two events. Amazing. Yeah. That's a load of money. That that's that's that is definitely a load of money. And there's a line that I wanted to use from Spaceballs that I can't there cuz you know, FCC regulations and whatnot. I know the mo- yes. I know the line you're You know the line about. I'm talking I want about. Space balls. Uh, exactly. But you get the idea. The, the, yeah, they definitely made a uh, a lot of money. But, uh, well, in the conference call, nothing was said about the specifics of those international events. They didn't really say exactly how much they made. I guess they you know, don't want to have that kind of paper trail, but they still legally have to report it. So that's why it's just kind of cradled into other. So we won't know exactly how much they made from those two events, but the significant difference I mean, you can see is, is uh, and that's just an estimate. It may be a little bit more, it could be a little bit less, but uh, they're definitely at least $80 million that they've made just from those two events. So say what you will about the the morals behind what they're doing. It, it's the golden rule. Whoever has the gold make the, makes the rules, I, I guess. Now, nothing was said about the specifics of their next international event other than reiterating the 10-year deal to produce content, quote, in the Middle East. In the Middle In the Middle East. They didn't necessarily say in Saudi Arabia. They're just saying in the Middle East, and I think that's to distance themselves from the scrutiny that they had received back in the fall regarding having that crown jewel pay-per-view. But what was addressed in it was uh, Vince McMahon talked about a decline in television ratings and live attendance, live event attendance, saying that athletes are not cartoons and that people get hurt. 
In other news, water is wet. No, uh, but Vince noted that the absence of Roman Reigns and John Cena, do, 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 working oh, a reduced okay. schedule due to his movie career, certainly had an effect. And then he also ran through the long list of injuries that the company has endured this year and said that it's not common for them to have so many. But he did say that it is one of the reasons that TV ratings and live event attendance has dropped. I buy that to a degree. I mean, I can buy it to a degree, too. And, I mean, you can see that in comparison with other sports where if a particular athlete that you're looking to see is injured and you know that they're not going to be in the game, there may be a significant amount of people who are going to say, eh, I don't want to watch, or, oh, they're in town, uh, but John Cena's not going to be there because he's doing a movie. Eh, all right, we're going to skip this one. Or something like that. I mean, you could see that with, with baseball going back, I know I'm going back a decade now, but, oh, wait, Ryan Howard's on the DL? All right, maybe we're not going to go down to watch the Phillies, although they also had Jimmy Rollins and Chase Utley, and, well, all right, we... If I, if I get into any more of a baseball discussion, then it's going to turn into Baseball Weekly here, and Ted's going to come in and probably more choose chew some of that fat as well as far as the uh, as the baseball talk goes. True, though. Because we like, we like our baseball. Yeah. But as, as an example there, I, I, I can see it to a degree, but, I mean, this has been a steady decline that WWE has had, especially noted in TV ratings, it's been a very subtle downward fall over the course of at least the last 10 years. So it's kind of hard to say that any more significant injuries this year have contributed any more to that decline. I think a lot of it is constant spinning of the wheels on television because you have the challenge, which is created by your own doing, of having to produce just on the two flagship shows, a combined five hours of live content every week. That's not easy to do. It's not. I have enough of a struggle doing one hour of this show. (laughs) I could Uh, not imagine sitting here for the length of Country Roads, let's say, and talking wrestling for five hours. I know there's certainly a lot to get into, but at some point the well runs dry a little bit. That's why people have been clamoring for ages to say, oh, you should expand your show to to an hour and a half, or you should expand it to two hours. And my reply to that is always, I don't want to fall into the same trap that WCW did with Monday Nitro and that WWE has for the better part of the last five-plus years in giving too much of a good thing not leaving people wanting more. I would much rather leave people wanting a little bit more and have to come back than feel like I've given them too much and they get oversaturated. That's a good way to put it. There's enough oversaturation that goes on in a litany of different things. I mean, look at look at the wrestling landscape right now. Uh, the, I mean, there are so many different entities that are out there and now with the addition coming forward of all elite wrestling aew that's just another thing you've got wwe you've got impact wrestling you've got ring of honor you've got new japan pro wrestling you've got triple a down in mexico you've got lucha underground out in california you've got uh, you know i mean you've got aew you've got uh, a litany of different local promotions i mean around here Yes, I'm going to plug them first. The Monster Factory, which they've got an event going on later tonight. Uh, I mean, there's there's up in North Jersey, Capital Wrestling, to which Lucas is now doing a lot more work with. I mean, there's oh goodness, I mean there, there there's there's so many. I mean, there's there's House of Hardcore with uh, with you know Tommy Dreamer's promotion. I mean, that's just off the top of my head. That's about ten or eleven different things. And if they each have some sort of a program, I mean, there's only 168 hours each week. And you, know, you have other things in your life to, that you have to do, you know, working, sleeping. So there's only so much time that you can commit to certain things. And yeah, so just with that alone, there is oversaturation. And I feel like putting more of myself out there would be a bit, it'd be a bit much. So I'd rather just kind of give you a little bit, let you enjoy it. 
and look forward to the next one as opposed to force feeding 90 minutes, two hours, three hours, whatever the case may be. Might there be the occasional two hour special? Yeah, absolutely. And that's what makes it special. Special, key word. Yeah, that w- when you had those three hour raws, it was because of certain special things, an anniversary, you know, a flagship number of episodes, like, you know, Raw 1000 or something along those lines, you know, Raw 15 for their 15th anniversary or 20th anniversary or 25th not too long ago. Those you could you could understand as flagship things that require an extra amount of content needed because you're going to have that walk down nostalgia, that, that walk down memory lane. But three hours of Monday Night Raw every week for the last five and a half years, people are burned out from it. It's a little too much. It is. It's too much of a good thing. And because there's that extra amount, people have been tuning out. But they don't want to necessarily admit, well, we want the revenue for that third hour of commercials and everything. And that will negate whatever loss there is in viewership. Maybe. I I don't know. That, That, I mean... I'm not in the inner circles in Titan Towers in Stamford, Connecticut. I'm just, I mean, this is the pulse of things that I've seen, yes, from the internet, but also from my own experiences. Watching Monday Night Raw for three hours each week is becoming a struggle, almost a chore. And it loses that luster of must-see because it has that feeling of being a chore. I mean, you as a as a you know as a teenager, yeah, you you understand you know when chores are assigned to you, it's not like oh goody, let me go get to these chores, let me go get to doing these dishes or taking out the trash. It's more no, of, it's not really uh, something you're enthused for. Exactly, and that is what I think seems to be missing is that enthusiasm that. Man, I can't wait to see what happens next as opposed to I've seen this already. Wait, John Cena versus Randy Orton again for the 39th time? Bored. That's... Yeah, you, you just keep feeding them the same thing. And even with the infusion of new talent, the in- interjection of those from NXT, I mean, most recently you've seen EC3 coming into the mix here. How long will it be before the bubble bursts on that popularity that on that you know how long before the new shiny toy is no longer new nor shiny i don't know these are some things to think about and contemplate and things of that nature here and wow that rant just pretty much took up the whole first segment true some i just kind of get lost in these things and next thing you know i just go on a tear here so We'll take a pause here to kind of hit the reset button on things. We'll get to look at the local scene from Ed from Northeast Philly on the other side. And we've got a lot more to get to that uh, isn't necessarily money-related, but uh, it is something that, well, in a way is money for Vince McMahon and WWE, but in a separate form. Yeah, we talked baseball. We're going to talk another pro sport that isn't wrestling on the other side. And... Obviously, we've got a lot of wrestling to get into also as a few big announcements that occurred over the course of the week. So we'll delve into those and also talk about some subscriberships, some Ring of Honor news, all elite wrestling news, a whole bunch more coming up on the other side. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Hi, this is Dr. Lee Piccarello inviting you to tune in every Friday morning at 8 a.m. to The Head Game, a must-listen show for athletes and coaches of all levels and ages. Mindful Athlete Training in Newtown, Pennsylvania is a mental circuit training program that prepares the athletes to perform at the highest level of today's game. Athletes get into the zone faster and stay there longer. Tune in every Friday morning at 8 a.m. right here on WBCB, 1490 a.m. and throughout the world at WBCB, 1490.com. 
Catch the ultimate wager and watch experience only at Chickies and Pete's. Place a bet at either the new sportsbook at Parks Casino or the sportsbook at the Tropicana. And then watch it pay off just steps away at the Chickies and Pete's inside both casinos. Chickies and Pete's will have all the big games on all the big screens. And the best bet is the food will be great. The ultimate in-game experience is now the ultimate wager and watch experience at Chickies and Pete's at Parks Casino and Chickies and Pete's at the Tropicana. Must be 21 or older and gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. All commentators heard on WBCB express their own views. Their opinions are not necessarily those of others on WBCB, including the staff and management. Here's another What's It Worth Antique Minute. Ever wonder how the 21-gun salute originated? The 21-gun salute is a tradition often used at military and law enforcement funerals where seven rifles each fire three blanks for a 21-gun salute. But gun salutes have been used by many different countries in many different formats for centuries. Why 21 guns for the United States and not 20 or 22? One theory has it that shortly after the founding of our country in 1776, someone realized that when you add the four numbers in 1776 together, 1 plus 7 plus 7 plus 6, you get 21. Thus, the 21-gun salute was recommended as a tribute to the year our country was founded. And it's been a U.S. tradition ever since. What's it worth? Back in 2014, Heritage Auctions sold a 1776 continental currency dollar for $1.41 million. Auctioneer, appraiser, and home downsizing expert Mike Ivakovich hosts What's It Worth? Ask Mike the Appraiser radio show. And you can tune in on Friday mornings from 9 to 10 on WBCB 1490 or on the Internet at WBCB1490.com. What script? We got rid of it, remember? Yeah, oh yeah, you crumbled it up. Wait, no, it's in the waste bucket. Und- I don't know why I just called it a waste bucket. I've been watching too much British television. And now, more Pro Wrestling Weekly with your hosts, Ferran Derry and Lucas DeSangro. No, sorry, that's the rubbish bin. <laughs> it's, been, it's in the... It's in Where the- most of your jokes go. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Ferran Derry here with you alongside Mitch. You bet. Mitch back in action after the break. we got to work on your programming a little bit here. Yeah. <laughs> got a couple of wires crossed up there. Uh, I was going to say, is it, it's almost like uh, Craig Ferguson and Jeff the Robot from the Late Late Show. Like, I'm almost getting that vibe a little bit here. You're comparing me to robots nearly every time we do. <laughs> uh. Well, at least well, at least Jeff is really, really funny. Like, Oh. Well, I was going to say, you, well, and, and I mean in an entertaining way. Yeah. You know, not, not funny like a clown. Yeah, yeah. A little, that's a little foreshadowing there. Just keep that in mind for about half hour from now. Okay. Birthdays. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, uh, before we get back into things here, uh, yes, Lucas is uh, dealing with a family emergency, so he won't be joining us here, uh, at least not this week. He's starting to border on the, you know, the Brock Lesnar schedule. Where he just shows up for certain certain key events throughout the year, so I, I joked with him back in January that we would see him again at WrestleMania in early April, and he's starting to. I'm starting to worry that he might be taking that seriously. I Not mean, through no through no fault of his own. It's just yeah. It, it's it's like the uh, it's like the old Richard Dimples Fields song from 1982. If it ain't one thing, it's another. Yeah, I, no, I completely lost about ninety nine percent of the audience on that one. Ted might have gotten that one, but that's another one of those uh, one of those ge- gem songs that are uh, researched into extinction or something along those lines. Anyway, let's uh, get a look over to the phones here. A gander over to the phones, and we've got Ed from Northeast Philly. Ed, welcome to Pro Wrestling Weekly. Good afternoon. Uh, super crazy pro wrestling tonight at the Homestead Boys Club. In Northeast Philly. All righty, we got uh, uh, the super. Uh, you said super crazy super pro crazy. wrestling. Yes, that's right. We've uh, we've talked a little bit about them uh, here and there, on and off over the course of the last couple of weeks here. 
Starts at five thirty. That uh, certainly should be a uh, certainly yeah. should be a goodie. That's for sure. As I, say, I, I have other commitments. Otherwise, I'd, I'd check them out. But uh, that's the bittersweet thing about uh, wrestling in this area is that there's so much, you know, there's so many great organizations that are going on. I I'd alluded to it before the break that sometimes you have conflicts and sometimes you have things that are booked against one another. Yeah, and I think they'll have an open house at 2 8 p.m. Huh. Not a bad thing to check out yeah. on the way down, perhaps? Absolutely. Um, there's GCW coming to the area on March 8th at the Voltage Lounge in Port Fishtown. Hmm. This is, I will admit, this is one that I haven't... It's a little bit new to me here, but I'm taking a look at it now here. Okay, Voltage Lounge on North 7th Street in... I think that's sold out now. Hmm. But they did I say limited Portland. tickets were available, and they went on sale yesterday. Morning, yeah, just yesterday at noon. Minutes. 15 minutes, someone told me. Oh, they sold out in 15 minutes. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. I'm trying Must to see... A small place. It is. I'm taking a little bit more of a look at it now. I think that that, if I'm looking well, right at the address the here, I think. Um, I think I'm... it might be. I think I was confusing a block up with the the building that used to be Shampoo Nightclub. But yeah, no, I do see it. So it's opposite that on 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 the other side of Seventh Street, uh, just off of Callahill Hill in in okay. Philadelphia. I thought that might be an old uh, electric factory building. Uh, well, I know that there's another one that's just a little bit further down the street that's yeah. also a venue. So there's there's a lot going down there. But yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that's uh, that's over uh, over at Seventh, uh, just off of Callahill. That's the that's where Voltage Lounge is. And National Pro Wrestling Day is tomorrow in Lancaster. They have Lost Ice Creams, Penelope Ford, Kimberly, Hal Wicket, and the Colony. Hmm. Yeah, it, it seems like it's always there in early February. I guess they yeah, opted. Two p.m. Uh, bell time. Yeah. So tomorrow being the tenth is uh, what they what they've made it for here, and yeah, I know Chikara Pro is uh, going to be participating in that, and yeah, they're heading out to Lancaster to be able to do so here, and. Uh, yeah, it's all going to be at the Arch Street Center, and I'm taking a look a little bit more at it here. And Okay, a few familiar faces with whom I've worked. Uh, so we've got Crummels and Defarge against Kimberly and Whisper. Uh, also, Officer Barksdale's going to be taking on Hallow Wicked. Uh, Cyberhawks 2000, they're, they're going to be in action. And uh, so is Juan Francisco de Coronado. So yeah, that should be, uh, that should be a great time. Oh, the colony is going to be in action too. Okay, man, this is uh, yeah. It looks it. It certainly looks fun, and uh, while it's a bit of a hike out to Lancaster, it uh, says here admission to the event is free, but a minimum ten dollar donation is suggested as your donations go to support the Arch Street Center. And then two good movies on television: Guardians of the Galaxy with the Batista, which is Wednesday at eight, and The Rock has. San Andreas tonight at 8.30 on USA Network. Hmm. Yeah, so so many, uh, I was yeah. going to say, so many different movies. I, I forgot that he was in San Andreas, I, or I forgot that that was a thing. I've seen part of it. I didn't see the whole movie yet. <laughs> yeah, he just he just keeps churning yeah. those things out, I'm telling you. It's, yeah. uh, like every, every eight weeks or so. It certainly feels that way. I mean, yeah. I'm looking now to see in, in terms of his filmography because I mean, I think didn't he just wrap up filming of? Uh, well, that's right. He, he was uh, wrapped up filming of Hobbs and Shaw, and that was what had uh, Roman Reigns with a cameo in there. Which is good to see that Roman Reigns is going to be at least a little bit of a part of it, uh, considering. Well, I mean, considering the leukemia that he's been going through, yeah, he he plays, he plays the Rock's brother, Duke Hobbs. 
MLW turns to ECW or to Twenty Three Hundred Arena June first, and tickets on sale now. Oh yeah, I, I forgot to see yeah. how things went with uh, with their event last uh, last yeah uh, with their with their event last week. So I'm kind of curious to see uh, how it's going to go next time around here. I know they had two title changes. Huh. The tag belts went to the Heart Foundation or the new Heart Foundation. Huh. And uh, there have been, okay. been a lot of different new Heart Foundations yeah, yeah. over the years. <laughs> yeah. And Loki lost the belt to Tom Lawler. Huh. That is uh, that, that is some interesting news here. And I'm taking and a look now at the 2300 Arena. It doesn't look like, yeah, it just says tickets coming soon, but it doesn't give anything more than that. And Dream, uh, Dreamer's partner was the same man. A uh, little, little old ECW connection. Yeah, yeah. Can't go wrong with that. And he's going to be at the Pasanic Elks Lodge in in Jersey tonight at 6 p.m. with Brian Cage, Tommy Dreamer, and Scarlett Bone. The Smoke Show. Oh, just, uh, just a whole bunch of folks I in there. I can't pronounce the last name. That's all right. No, no worries there. That's for sure. Anyway, wow, we're, the time just keeps uh, it just keeps on keeps on trucking here today. Uh, but we got to get rolling. Uh, but I thank you so much for the for the call as always here, and uh, we'll catch up with you next week. And CCW is tonight too. Don't forget. C- oh my goodness, CCW. Yeah, there, yeah like, take your pick of where to go tonight. I mean, there, there's like five different things that are all going on here tonight and in the area. Hall of Fame tonight. For CCW. Oh, plus oh, the Hall of Fame for CCW. Okay, yeah. interesting. I don't know. I think Masada and I the other three that were inducted. Hmm. Well, we can we can talk a little bit more about the uh, the, yeah. the aftermath of that next week here. But yeah. uh, I got to get uh, I think rolling my time here. <laughs> yeah, I know. T- the time just as I said, it rolls on yeah. here. But thank you so much for the call, as always, Ed. And we'll uh, we'll catch up more on that next week here. And we're uh, going to have to take care of a little bit of a timeout, but first, oh, I can't wait. I've, I've been chomping at the bit to talk about this because it always gives me a chance to play this here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the XFL! Ah, yes, that's right. A little bit of XFL news coming your way here. And no, not about a, uh, a reunion or anything of that nature. Yes, it's still a year out, but... Always finding a way to sneak something in here. As uh, this past Thursday, they announced the hiring of Bob Stoops as the head coach and general manager of the league's franchise in Dallas, Texas. Now, that may may sound familiar to football fans out there, as he had coached the Oklahoma Sooners to a very impressive 190 and 48 record, 190 wins and 48 losses, before announcing his retirement in June 7th of 2017. So he's now in XFL. He's now going to be coaching the XFL next year, and uh, the the 59-year-old coach led the Sooners to a national championship in college football back in 2000. And the timing is rather interesting, as the announcement came just two days before the rival organization AAF, the Alliance of American Football, holds its first game as there are a pair of AAF games tonight at 8 o'clock. Yeah, lots of different competing football organizations as well. Now, the one is headed by Charlie Ebersol, the son of longtime NBC head Dick Ebersol, who co-founded the XFL with Vince McMahon back in 2001. Well, that's interesting. So, yeah, they, they, after the documentary of This Was the XFL, it kind of got both minds churning, but rather than working together, they're now both trying to do their own separate thing, and Vince is sticking with his XFL, and... Ebersol is attaching himself to this AAF, the Alliance of American Football, so it should be interesting. And for those looking for another wrestling connection, Stoops is friends with longtime play-by-play voice and also longtime Oklahoma Sooners backer, Jim Ross, good old JR. Because, well, yeah, I mean, that, how many times, have, I mean, that, that Boomer Sooner was Jim Ross's entrance theme. 
That's you know, it's that whole. I mean, it, it, it's that whole Sooner connection thing. You know, it's a college alumni, you know, alma mater type stuff. You'll learn it when you get older because you're still in. You're, you're you're not quite at college yet. Close, but not quite. I mean, when I get there, I'll probably yeah. learn. Yeah, you, you'll you'll pick it up and understand and get all that going here. Anyway, we're going to take care of our second time out here and then come back with more stuff here on Pro Wrestling Weekly on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. You won't see termites crawling across your floor, but thousands might be devouring the wood in your walls, weakening the structure of your home. For over 50 years, termite proofing and pest control of the Delaware Valley has been in the exterminating business. If you think you have a pest problem, they're the experts. Call them today at 215-639-5455. That's 215-639-5455 for TPPC. Termite proofing and pest control of the Delaware Valley gives your home or business peace of mind, knowing your pest problem is in their hands. Located at 1560 Bristol Pike in Ben Salem, they use only EPA-approved material applied by licensed technicians. Call Termite Proofing and Pest Control of the Delaware Valley at 215-639-5455. Turn your caring, compassionate nature into a rewarding career in nursing or take your nursing career up a level. Gwynedd Mercy University has been a leader in nursing education for more than 50 years, offering CCNE accredited nursing programs for beginning students to experienced professionals. Looking to change careers? Ask about our 15-month ABSN program. Students say GMercyU provides affordability, convenience, and flexibility. Stand out in your career. Go to gmercyu.com or text MERCY to 343434. Be sure to tune into Senior Legal Strategies with Henry Carpenter every Tuesday morning at 9, right here on 1490 WBCB. Imagine. Imagine being denied an apartment because of housing discrimination. It's so wrong. But who has the power to stop this? You do. The law is on your side. If you've been discriminated against because of race, color, religion, sex, national origin, disability, or familial status, file a complaint with HUD. Fair housing is your right. Use it. Visit HUD.gov slash fair housing. A public service message from HUD and the National Fair Housing Alliance. At St. Mary Medical Center, they're on a mission to help you live your healthiest life. Learn more about their advanced technology and innovative procedures, as well as the small steps you can take to be your healthiest self. Meet their highly trained physicians and skilled professionals. Count on St. Mary for experience, brilliant technology, and the most powerful medicine of all, simple human kindness. St. Mary Healthline, every Wednesday at 9 a.m. on 1490 WBCB. Pro Wrestling Weekly presents Today in Wrestling History, February 9th. On this date in 1998, WCW Monday Nitro aired live from El Paso, Texas. In the main event, the Steiner Brothers defeated Scott Hall and Kevin Nash to win the WCW World Tag Team Championship. On this date in 2004, WWE Monday Night Raw aired live from Portland, Oregon. In the main event, Randy Orton defeated Booker T and Rob Van Dam in a triple threat match. On this day in 2009, WWE Monday Night Raw aired live from Oakland, California. In the main event, The Undertaker defeated Randy Orton by disqualification. On this day in 2015, WWE Monday Night Raw aired live from Columbus, Ohio. In the main event, Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns defeated Jamie Noble, Joey Mercury, Kane, Seth Rollins, and The Big Show in a 5-on-2 handicap tag team match. This has been Today in Wrestling History, February 9th. Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. For Ron Derry here with you alongside a slowly but surely getting more comfortable with his own voice, Mitch. Nice to be back again. And yes, I am. It just clicked a little over time. We'll, 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 we'll get you to relax a little bit here. It, it's... It sounds forced. You know, we were talking earlier about forcing the... Just let your personality be... Unless that is your personality. I mean, I mean you, if it is, then okay. 
But I've, I've heard you talk a little bit more relaxed, just like we are here. It doesn't sound like, ah, great to be with you. You, you can dial it back a little bit. Okay, okay I'll dial yeah, it Yeah, you can, you can... I appreciate the enthusiasm, don't get me wrong. It's just, it it sounds contrived. And I, I, I don't think you want to necessarily come across in a disingenuous way to, to everybody listening in here. Because I don't want you to get off on the wrong foot with people. Understand. I don't think you want to get off on the wrong foot with anybody. Of course not. <laughs> I mean, well, there's Twitch, but then again, he's worried about being replaced and then keeps not showing up, so it's kind of warranted. But that's a whole other story. Let's get into some other news and whatnot here. And Oh, well, would you look at that? Just got a uh, tweet from our friends over at the Broken Goblet Brewery as uh, now on tap, escorted from the building, the Irish Red Ale. It's, uh, well, it's certainly strong and it'll knock you for a loop, that's for sure. I may have to... May have to get one of those after the show, the way things have been going here. We'll see. Maybe just, you know, half poor. Play, great place to check out, though. So, in some other news here, Seth Rollins er, nursing an undisclosed injury that will prevent him from getting physically involved for roughly a month, according to John Pollock of PostWrestling.com. Uh, the story notes that the injury predates his angle with Brock Lesnar from Raw, and that the plan is to have him deliver promos while he's recovering as that's leading toward the Seth Rollins-Brock Lesnar match at WrestleMania, thanks to Rollins winning the Royal Rumble. (laughs) So we'll see how that goes going forward here. And tickets went on sale yesterday for WrestleMania Access. Speaking of WrestleMania, it's WWE's Interactive Fan Festival. Uh, It'll take place from Thursday, April 4th through Monday, April 8th at Brooklyn Pier 12 in Brooklyn, New York. Finding lots of lots of ways to encompass the New York and New Jersey area for the pretty much five days that's uh, going to be this the, the whole WrestleMania weekend aura, which it'll 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 be a bigger deal as it gets closer. It's just there's a lot of pomp and circumstance that goes with it. Uh, the way that WrestleMania access works, it gives the WWE universe unprecedented access to meet their favorite WWE superstars and legends through a host of interactive fan experiences, including autograph signings, live matches, memorabilia, photo opportunities, and whole, a whole bunch more. Uh, and it'll also host the WrestleMania Superstore, which will feature the largest selection of WWE merchandise under one roof. Well, that certainly, that certainly seems nice. Yeah, I did have the chance to attend Access. Uh, it was actually, yeah, it was about five years ago uh, when they were last up in North Jersey, and I uh, got the chance to interact with and uh, even get a few interviews for the show here with the likes of The Miz, Christian. We actually got little snippets from Dean Ambrose, Roman Reigns, and Seth Rollins when they were together with The Shield, just to just to name a few. And it was uh, yeah, William Regal, uh, uh, certainly a legendary wrestler as well. Mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart, legendary manager. It was it was a fun time and a great experience. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out on Brooklyn Pier 12, whereas before they had it in the now defunct Izod Center, just adjacent to. MetLife Stadium, home of WrestleMania that year. So we'll see. It was like the indoor arena right next to the big outdoor football stadium. Huh. But there was a lot going on all at the same place, so that made it a little difficult. So good to see that they're shaking things up. And speaking of shaking things up, the WWE Superstar Shakeup is going to be held April 15th and 16th in Montreal, Quebec at the Bell Center. Uh, it's the annual talent shakeup that'll be held over Raw and SmackDown, and that's pretty much where they have wrestlers change over from one roster to the other, so, to the other. So you'll see people who were exclusively wrestling on Raw moved over to SmackDown, and vice versa. Huh? So it's, it's yeah, it's almost like in pro sports how a player changes from one team to another. Same kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was getting to. Uh, now to some. Well, we'll get into some AEW news here, as there's certainly a lot to go on with that. As uh, we were talking about and kind of alluding to, now it's been made official that All Elite Wrestling, they're going to have their Double or Nothing pay-per-view on May 25th in Las Vegas, Nevada at the MGM Garden Grand Arena. And there are already matches that are set up for it. The Young Bucks against Pentagon Jr. and Ray Phoenix. The rematch of Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho. That's one that a lot of people are looking forward to. Pac against Adam Page. Also, Christopher Daniels, Frankie Kazarian, and Scorpio Sky against Sema and two OWE partners. And 
not that it's official yet the way they're going with it, but they've also been setting up Nyla Rose against Kyle Ray, but not sure whether they'll have a singles match or whether uh, whether a tag match will be involved. So I guess that'll develop over the next couple of months here. But tickets go on pre-sale this Monday at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon local time, and that's for AEW's Double or Nothing from Vegas. And also as a part of that, to kind of build up to that huge hype weekend type thing, almost like a WrestleMania, there's going to be the StarCast 2 event. It's going to include appearances by Hall of Famer Sting and Bret Hart. It's a convention that will be held May 23rd through the 26th in Vegas. And the general public on- online sale for StarCast will begin this Friday, February 15th at noon Eastern. It's being held in conjunction with Double or Nothing. And Fight is going to be once again... Uh, they're listed on the official StarCast site, so they'll be streaming the event as a pay-per-view. It's a series of various major wrestling podcasters. Uh, pretty much, it's almost like the radio row of the Super Bowl. How you have all the different you know, radio stations that do interviews in the same way. There's going to be all these different podcasters, including uh, the promoter of the event, Comrade Thompson, as well as uh, the social media pages for StarCast advertising, Eric Bischoff, the former head of WCW and former WWE general manager, Sean Mooney, the former longtime WWF interviewer, Bruce Pritchard, longtime backstage, uh, pretty much right-hand man to Vince McMahon, and Tony Schiavone, the play-by-play announcer for both WCW and the WWF. And more names are going to be announced in the weeks ahead. Also, Ring of Honor has officially announced the signing of PJ Black. Uh, Terms of the deal were not disclosed. Black telling ROHWrestling.com, quote, I chose ROH over the other companies because the hybrid style that fans seem to enjoy most these days, I started. In Africa, he's from South Africa originally, we didn't have a specific style. At a young age, I traveled to the UK to learn the British style and combined that with lucha and some strong style, creating my own hybrid style, which is what everyone these days seem to follow. So in this case, PJ Black, who wrestled in the WWE a few years ago as Justin Gabriel, he has this mix of wrestling styles that include a little bit from England, a little bit from Mexico, a little bit from Japan, and it's a very well-rounded. It's very well-rounded. It's it's almost like learning different, you know, three different cultures and kind of incorporating them into your own, you know, mixing pot of all of those. Gotcha. All right. I was hoping for something there, but you, you had nothing. Okay. Yeah, I no got worries. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. Uh, WWE star AJ Styles denied an online report that he's battling a hernia injury. Uh, Styles was asked on Twitter by a fan what he's doing wrestling with a hernia, and he tweeted in response, Yeah, about that. I don't have a hernia. Uh, he's previously disputed another online report that he'd re signed with WWE as his deal with WWE will reportedly expire in April. Let the speculation of him going to AEW commence if it hasn't already. And I know we were talking gridiron a little bit ago, but former NFL punter Pat McAfee announced that he is an official WWE employee. He's been working with them on and off on some various projects, but he wrote on Twitter, quote, I can officially say I'm a WWE employee, a real lifelong dream coming true thanks to Michael Cole and Triple H. This opportunity means the world to me. He had been working as a panelist on the NXT pre-shows, and no word whether his role will expand beyond that. McAfee, a former punter for the Indianapolis Colts NFL team, and he also worked as a color commentator for uh, NFL and college football a little bit last year as well. So interesting to see how that goes. And the CEO to Fox, Charlie Collier, had spoke at a Television Critics Association event earlier this week and addressed SmackDown's move to the network this coming October telling MonstersAndCritics.com at the event that the, quote, WWE relationship we have said that is Friday night, short time Friday night, is going to WWE. Uh, He added that SmackDown will air live on Fox and that Fox Sports 1 will feature additional WWE programming. And the rumor based on that is there's the possibility that NXT, the development for WWE, could go to FS1. But the phrasing of short time is interesting. So is it possible that SmackDown may start on the main Fox network and then be moved to FX, uh, FS1? Well, time will certainly tell on that. And, well, we talked a little Ring of Honor. Uh, Ring of Honor announcing that the Festival of Honor uh, will be held 
on Friday, April 5th at the Hulu Center in Madison Square Garden, again, part of all the WrestleMania weekend hullabaloo. And for something a little bit more recent with them and something a little near and dear to me here because it's somebody who I've worked with and, well, he had the position that I now have with the Monster Factory. But Ring of Honor play-by-play voice Ian Riccoboni announcing he will not be appearing at this weekend's events, including the TV tapings tonight, because he noted that his wife is pregnant with their second child and she is expected to give birth this weekend. He says, It comes with a surprising amount of guilt. I just signed a new deal, and it's easier to record commentary live in building for TV, etc., but the ROH team didn't blink. It means the world. They're taping TV tonight in Lakeland, Florida, and they'll be live on Honor Club Sunday night with a show from Coral Gables, Florida. But they gave him the weekend off to spend time with his wife. And uh, congratulations on the newborn coming here, Ian. It's uh, good to see. It's uh, always a nice little story there. Congratulations indeed. Most certainly. And uh, another thing of note, All Elite Wrestling and Mexico's AAA promotion announced an alliance ahead of the AEW rally in Las Vegas this past Thursday. And that's significant on a number of levels because, well... There's different working relationships that may be shaken up because of this. Uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling, they have a working relationship with Mexico's CMLL as well as Ring of Honor, so that move could seemingly push AEW and New Japan further apart. Meanwhile, Impact Wrestling has had a working relationship with AAA, and there's no telling how that alliance will be affected by AEW's partnership with AAA. So there's a lot of, you know, the new kid in town kind of forcing some of the old things out, and it's hard to say how that'll go. But it's pretty easy to say what's going to be going next, and that one thing would be, well, it's because it's time for... Birthdays! Right on cue. Two plus five Brucey bonuses. All right, on this date in 1964, Deborah Ann Michelli was born. The former three-time WWF Women's Champion, former WCW Cruiserweight Champion, as well as WWE Hall of Famer known both as Medusa and Alundra Blaze turns 55 today. And hopefully she won't celebrate by throwing anything into the trash can. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, you know that uh, yeah, story. Yeah, okay. There we go. He's learning. I love it. On this date in 1980, Shelley Leonor Martinez was born. The former WWE and TNA wrestler and valet known both as Ariel and Salinas turns 30, uh, 39 today. Math. I can math good sometimes. And to the Brucey bonuses, things outside of the world of wrestling. And I know Ted and uh, Mitch as well get a kick out of this here. On this date in 1942, Carol Joan Klein was born. The Grammy Award-winning singer and songwriter known for songs including It's Too Late, I Feel the Earth Move, and Nightingale, among many others, known professionally as Carol King, turns 77 today. And remember that foreshadowing a half hour ago? On this date in 1943, Joseph Frank Pesci was born. The actor and comedian known for his roles in the Home Alone movies as well as tough guys in mobster movies like Goodfellas and Casino turns 76 today. He was nice. the one who was like, what am I funny like a clown? That, yeah, like, yeah, ah, yeah, 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 there you go, yeah. See, it's uh, a callback. I know Home Alone. Also on this date in 1943, Barbara Lewis was born, the R&B singer best known for her 1963 soul hit song, one of my favorites, Hello Stranger. She turned 76 as well today. On this date in 1961, John Martin Cruck was born. The former Major League Baseball first baseman, part of the 1993 National League champion Phillies, turns 58 today. I'm not an athlete, lady. I'm a ball player. He's a ball player, yep. (laughs) Uh, That famous quote is, yep, I'm not an athlete, I'm a ball player. And finally, on this date in 1976, Charlie Day was born, the actor and comedian best known for his role of Charlie Kelly on the sitcom It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. He turns 43 today. Nice. Got to keep it local. It's always a good thing. That's going to do it for us. Until next week, play us out, Nutsy. One o'clock and all's well. Serving you better than ever before. This is 1490 WBC.